Here's a review of the 2014 Acura RLX. This one's front wheel drive version. It still handles very, very well for a car of this size, but how does it stack up overall with the S-Class from uh, Mercedes and my beloved LS from Lexus? Stay tuned, see you on the other side of the intro video. Hit that subscribe button. Okay, let's get into the review of the Acura. Now this car, the first thing that jumps out at you is the headlights, right? So these headlights, we have five beams in here. So the first four are going to be your low beams. They're all on, right? This one is your high beam. Now below that is a reflector, to my knowledge. Okay, so there's five actual lights in here. The other one that looks like another light is actually a reflector to double the spray of the light, which makes sense because LEDs are very, very directional. They don't do the best job at spreading light, uh, at least in my experience. Uh, but anyways, let's, let's just go over to the history of this car. The, the headlights just stole me away from um, my planned presentation. So this car came out as a 2014 model in 2013. Uh, in Japan, this car is called the Honda Legend. You know why? because Acura doesn't exist in Honda. If you didn't know that, now you know. Uh, this has a nice three and a half liter VTEC engine with a six speed transmission. It does the job very well and you get 20 in the city and 30 miles per gallon on the highway. If you can find the hybrid version of that, of this car, it is top of the line. It is all wheel drive. It does have like 370 horsepower. That car would be an absolute hoot to drive. This one's okay. This one's not bad. It's a great sedan overall, but it doesn't doesn't quite hold up to uh, you know the industry standards in terms of you know flagship luxury sedan. Um, this does have a PAWS Precision All Wheel Steering System, and it does a phenomenal job. It kind of feels weird if you're not used to it, but it does a really good job uh, getting this large car around the corners. Uh, in 2018. They completely redid the exterior and the interior of the car. I would love to see it in person um, because this one is aging just a little bit, even though it's you know four to five years old. Uh, it is aging a little bit, but it still holds its own. The styling of this car is very good. The lights are very attractive. That grill I think is awesome. Looks very aggressive. These wheels are are black in my opinion. They're they're large wheels. They're 19 inch wheels. 245 by 40 tires. Um, stepping back here, we have a large chrome running around the windows. Uh, and these wheels, ugh, gosh, they almost remind me of infinity wheels, and I don't like most infinity wheels. Um, some of them are okay, but that's just a personal preference. These taillights do look a little cheap, in my opinion. They don't have the depth or the um, detail of let's say a Lexus taillight. They almost remind me of like a Subaru Legacy in the back. Um, so very, very plain back here. We don't even have an exhaust tip. You have to look under and it's very, very under stylus. It does have quad tip dual exhaust. Acura, make it look cool. Instead you put chrome around the reflectors on the bottom and you didn't make it a quad tip design. Very, very disappointing. I feel like that's an opportunity that they missed on to make this car look a lot better on the back. Um, but let's go ahead and jump on the inside. Under the hood of the RLX, guys, we have a very peppy three and a half liter Earth Dreams VTEC. I wish they would say Earth Dreams. I mean, it's a little bit of a cheesy of a name, but be proud of your Earth Dreams Acura and your Honda roots. Uh, a good amount of power in this, 310 horsepower with a six speed uh, automatic transmission. This particular engine setup also has variable cylinder management or VC VCM for short and allows it, the engine to go down to three cylinders if necessary so it can uh, conserve fuel, especially out there on the highway. Um, but you know, I think they did an okay job with the interior. I like the Acura emblem there. Wish they would, you know, this would, this would have been a great place right there. I don't know if you guys see that. Right there to put that Earth Dreams, or at least, you know, three and a half liter V6. But overall, the uh, 
the presentation of the engine's pretty decent, and I do like uh, the peppiness of this VTEC as well, yo. Let's get inside of the interior of the 2014 Acura RLX. It's very warm in here, it's a black on black car. Start engine button is here. I get fired up. I'll probably be greeted with very loud fans here. Climate control is here, and I like that simple aspect of it. You can see this turning on, and there is the instrument cluster. So we're just gonna raise the temperature here, and you can see everything is effective on the screen. Now it's a touch screen, I can just control the fan, which I'm gonna have to do so you guys can hear me uh, fairly well. I actually like the, the reach here, it's very, very easy. Um, to touch and navigate so I like that and then of course you have more buttons here if you want to see or Control the, the screen up here. So if you wanted to go to the audio All right, it's gonna to switch to the audio up there um, <clears throat> So it's very interesting I have this dial here to control that but I can also touch the screen here to get to that radio station um, I don't know how to feel about that because I don't know which one I should be using, but I'm sure you would figure out which one's more efficient for you. I think this would be a lot easier over time uh, to use. But anyways, uh, there's a dual screen setup, and then we have a center screen as well in there. Uh, lane keep assist system, I think that's what LKAS means. ACC, I don't know what uh, Atlantic Coast Conference. Isn't that what ACC stands for? LDW, don't know. Parking assist, traction control, combs. You guys know what the comb system is? I don't know. I don't know my Acuras that well, and I did a, d a decent amount of research before getting in this car and sounding completely clueless, but uh, I'm still fairly clueless. We do have um, a nice Krell audio system. I don't know if you guys can see that. Krell. I've never heard of that before. I don't know if it's good or not, but I feel like luxury is about name recognition, brand recognition, and um, I don't recognize Krell. Now, Lexus, and when you're in your Lexus vehicle, no one knows what the hell Mark Levinson is, excuse my language. No one knows what Mark Levinson is, and is a fantastic product. So. Um, I'm gonna give Crowd the benefit of a doubt. It's probably a pretty good system. We have some blind spot monitoring right here, whereas in our Lexus vehicle, it's on the outside of the mirror. Interior materials. Soft touch plastic here, disappointing for a luxury vehicle. It's not as disappointing as the S-Class I was in yesterday because that car retailed for like 90,000. Um, more plastic here, plastic. And then finally down here is actually a leather, a soft touch leather. Uh, we have this nice wood trim. I always love wood in a vehicle, especially if it's done right. And you can see at the front we have the trunk and then the gas cap. Uh, just two memory seats here. And then we have a very, very small, this is one of the smallest uh, map pockets I've ever seen. And we have some stitching here. It looks like it's white on the camera, but it's actually black stitching. <clears throat> We saw the instrument cluster. Let's get on the steering wheel. This is a typical Acura. You, you see this in your modern Acuras as well with these little dials. Uh, phone control is going to be here as well as radio. Uh, here is your dynamic cruise control, your radar cruise control, lane keep assist. Um, and then here is going to be your screen toggling. So you can see I'm pushing up. It's changing everything on the back of the screen. Okay. So you see that, and then here's cruise control, and then we have these cheap little paddle shifters on the back. Windshield wipers, we have your lights right there. I'm not gonna get too much into this system, guys. Um, <clears throat> there's just a lot of information here. I can press tons of buttons. I press menu down here, and it affects the top screen, because the central one, again, is a touch screen. Um, it's mainly, I think, for climate control and radio. Uh, but if you want navigation, it only comes up on the top screen, and there you go. It's a decent little screen. Um, your clock is there. The vents are, are very well placed, and I like how it's angled at me. And so many cars are just angled flat. Um, kind of like how the screen is angled fairly flat. 
but this this vent is already pre-angled at me which i like quite a bit so we have nice wood here ventilated seats i'm turning that on thank you very much and i wish this was a red light to kind of go with the theme of the screens here the th the screens by default have a, a lot of red in them i wish this would continue with the, the red theme here is your uh, 12 volt you can push this close i would keep it closed most of the time because i like staring at the clean wood finish here under here was a couple cup holders we have a sport mode and unlike your new and modern uh you know hondas i know this is not here but you know what I'm, where i'm going um it's not a push button um it's it's actually a, your standard drive so just pull this go to, into drive and i'm ready to go brake hold and uh, parking brake we have a very small compartment on top and th it, that stops there now similar to the s class i was in yesterday there's another button here okay does this have to be closed this has to be closed for you to open up this okay we have a little tray that i took out auxiliary usb and power outlet there uh, and a good amount of storage inside inside of this i think that's in all the way that's what she said oh, okay um more wood here another a nice little but button for uh your storage there in the glove box there you can see the full design of the front doors not very impressive very honda like in my opinion and that's kind of accurate interior in general these seats are very comfortable um they're they're gonna hold up well in the turns. I would say the bolstering's pretty good. The seat's not too wide like I was in that Dodge Dart yesterday. Um, but let's go ahead, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's chill out, let's chill out. I always forget about the sunroof. Push to tilt, so uh, let's just see. We do have your sunglasses. Let's look at the visor. Visor has two lights. Again, my hair, it's not gonna be exciting, guys, because I just cut it all off, so can you even see it there? No more hair. It grows, it grows though, rest assured. Um, here's your sunroof. Very easy to slide open. I like that. Some sunroofs, like the S-Class I was in, it took a lot of strength to pull that open. But that's about it for up here. Let's go ahead and get in the back. Hopping in the back. Let's close this. I like this tweeter facing right at me so I can, you know, catch the highs. We have another speaker built into the door. No map pop pocketing or anything on the side. <clears throat> um, leather on the armrest here. And leather... I don't think this is leather. This little strip here, this is strange. This little strip is actually leather, but the material below it's plastic. We actually have sunshades. I like sunshades in the back. Oh, and check this out. So when you pull it up, it has a little mechanism to pull that one to cover the small window as well. Nice little feature. These are some very detailed map pockets. Wow, Acura. Acura usually lets me down with their interior, but the, the, the back seat of, the, of this is very well done. You know, very soft touch, good, good stitching all around. More stitching here, very soft touch, nice matte pocket with a lot of stitching on that matte pocket. That's like the best matte pocket I've ever seen. Uh, nice job, we have some heated rear seats. We do have a sunshade here. Uh, I'm gonna press it, I'm gonna turn you around slowly so you guys don't get whiplash. Beautiful cloudy day. It's a little warm though, and that's why we have sunshades. So back here, this is the strangest implementation of climate control because I can turn this to heat and it's definitely getting hotter, which I don't want it to get hotter. Uh, it takes a bit, of course, um, but you can control the vents. You actually can turn them free flowing or not free flowing. Um, I'm not gonna be sitting back here any longer so I can get probably more air focused on the interior of the cabin. But again, we have the Krell speakers, loud and proud. What does the seat feel like? It's very comfortable. Um, lots of leg room. I have no problems with the leg room here. Uh, the seat's very comfortable. <sighs> Let's fold this down. Now, for some reason, this car was returned to us without a headrest there. I've seen stranger things in this world, but that's pretty weird. Your cup holder is inside of here. Oh, my leg's in the way. Cup holder here, they're very small, but they are adjustable. That is, what what kind of sized cup would fit in here? You see that? I can't even, 
what I don't know I don't know if you guys know of the world's smallest bottle that would fit in there let me know this armrest is very nice and this leather is held up really well but I don't think anyone's ever sat in these back seats because the the whole back besides the missing headrest even the floor mats are in very very good condition and we have a pass-through I don't know how I feel about this loose piece of leather here but we do that we got a nice pass through to the trunk which we're gonna check out right now so this trunk is not very exciting we have lots of hook uh, and strap anchors there you can see that the it's there's nothing going on here um, you got some hooks here and then you don't even have like an emergency escape hatch so you know if you're a creeper get the RL uh, or the RLX because there's no way for you to get outside of the trunk There's no escape hatch or s escape lever to open the trunk from the inside um, And you know, you can't fold down the rear seats either. So this is like the ultimate creeper trunk uh, Because it's all blacked out and well, we got one light. We got one light uh, but it is it is a big trunk and That's all you really need for a trunk to be All right, let's take it for a spin I'm pretty excited. I always like Honda motors. I think they do a pretty good job overall with their motors. And this will be fun um, compared, and I was in the S class earlier, well, yesterday. So it'll be kind of good to just compare this car. I know it's not even close to the same league, excuse me, in terms of price or luxury or refinement. Uh, but Acura always does it, and Honda for that matter, always does a really good job with sportiness and performance. Uh, this the steering wheel feels great and the stitching in it is pretty well done it reminds me uh, of our Lexus stitching which is a very good compliment uh, so I'm excited to see what this you know 310 horsepower feels like um, if you look at my TLX review with the six-speed manual mated to this engine that car was an absolute blast I expect this one to be a little bit more subdued a little bit more relaxed in its driving style um, but, uh, I, yeah, the steering so far is very, very easy to turn. Um, you know, I do prefer the, the wood steering wheel on this type of vehicle. You know, the Mac Daddy, the, the flagship of the lineup, I feel like should have a nice wood steering wheel, but, uh, Leather's okay. I'll take a full leather steering wheel. It's better than plastic. We're gonna get onto the freeway here. A little acceleration test. We have a nice BMW 750i in front of me. That would be a lot of fun to drive one day. Let's kind of let's get into it. Slowly ease into the throttle. Smooth, smooth. It didn't even downshift for me. That's kind of surprising. Ooh, I like this motor. I just love the smoothness of a V6 and more so I love the smoothness of a V8. Has Honda ever made a V8 or Acura for that matter? Have they ever made a V8? Let me know. I feel like I should know the answer to this and I'm sure there's an obvious one. Okay, so this car is pulling me hard to the left. So I don't know what's going on there. Now this car just got traded in. It hasn't passed through our inspection process yet or, or our shop. So it is pulling hard to the left. It needs a little bit of alignment improvement. Uh, but to me, for me to correct it, actually I don't feel like I have to do anything. It's just when I take my hand off the steering wheel, it starts pulling to the left. Anyways, it's not a fault on this car. I mean, it, it only has 46,000 miles. So that lane departure warning that just went off was pretty loud and it pulled me back into the lane pretty well. So I am impressed with that safety system. I don't always test those safety systems on purpose. Uh, and I, that's that should be the point is that they should naturally, through your daily driving, be an assist to you. And in that case it was. I shouldn't have to go out of my way to test it. Ride feel out here on the highway it's very very smooth I don't feel like it's nearly as quiet as the S class or the LS um, and I do feel like I'm talking a little bit louder than I was in that S class yesterday uh, but now that we're up to speed let's downshift no one's in my blind spot oh gosh okay I don't need any more power than that 
I prefer the feel of a V8, don't get me wrong, uh, and the sound of a V8, the torque of a V8. This transmission, this six-speed transmission, downshifted very quick, very aggressively, uh, and I'm gonna do that again for you guys to, to get a taste of. VTEC, yo. It, it revs very happy, very smooth, a lot of power up top in the rev range. And this thing likes to rev as long as you, you want it to. Um, now, this doesn't feel heavy. This car does, feels like just a, a, a slightly stretched out version of that TLX I was in. Um, it feels very similar though. It just feels a little bit larger. And your visibility, guys, it's actually pretty good. Not as good as, I would say, the LS or, or the S-Class that I've driven, but it's good enough. Um, most of my visibility is taken up with the camera right now. And the, and the power of this engine, I don't necessarily want to downshift to feel the engine. I like this transmission probably better than the engine um, with how swift and quick it is to downshift. And it it's like, okay, you and a boogie, I'm gonna rev this thing to the 7,000 RPM, and it does it, and it does like, goes, there's, it, it does it, and it does it very quick, and I love the responses, responsiveness of it. The engine's good, you don't need any more power than this. Um, personally though, if I was getting a, a big luxury sedan, I want that V8. I wanna be able to just poke around in low RPMs with that torque and feel like an old man most of the time, and then, you know, wake up that mountain of, of torque and power at the top when I feel like it. And this engine, you really only have that top end power and scoot. There is a good amount of, you know, I said it's smooth out here on the highway, but there is a good amount. You can feel quite a bit from the road into the seat and through the floor. Um, it's definitely less than, you know, a normal car being a, it being an Acura, but it doesn't feel that luxurious brake test brakes are okay probably give them a B um, I got on them pretty hard I was going downhill I hit them a little bit late on purpose so I could test them uh, it, it seemed to go through waves of braking power so while I was going down linearly with my foot linear with my foot the brake was like a power a little brake power a little brake power um, so we're gonna get into the throttle here. Three, two, one, go. Okay, so you heard the wheels chirp there. Now I, could, I couldn't rev this out nearly as much as I would like to uh, because there's a huge cement truck in front of us. But if you're getting one of these, try to get the all-wheel drive system um, because that TLX with the super handling all-wheel drive that I drove, that thing uh, man, that thing handles like a dream with that all-wheel drive system. Acura does a really good job with the super handling all-wheel drive. Now this car has the, the pod, the precision all-wheel steering, or the paws, I should say, P slash, or P hyphen AWS. Precision all-wheel steering, I think is what it stands for. And guys, I'm gonna have to put you on pause this <laughs> no pun intended, pause, because this cement truck is being a bummer. Okay, let's go, let's go. He's out of the way now. And you know, that all, that front wheel drive, in a vehicle you're paying for this much, you know, you wanna have at least rear wheel drive, um, in my opinion. Wow, holy crap, okay. So this car handles like a much smaller vehicle and that all wheel drive steering it feels weird. Holy crap. It feels really weird to have the rear wheels helping you steer if you've never had that done for you before. But it hugs the road extraordinarily well for a vehicle of this size. You know, there is a good amount of body uh, body lean, but it's, it's definitely acceptable. And these seats do a really good job of, of bolstering you in. You're not flopping about like I was in that Dodge Dart yesterday. But we made it to the lake, so go. let's go ahead and sum up this video. Overall, this is a very fine vehicle for what it is. Now, it doesn't cost nearly as much as a Mercedes, a BMW, 
a Lexus and for good reason. The interior is very underwhelming. Typical Acura standards for me, which isn't much better than a, a, a high trim Honda. Um, the exterior styling is great. The, the transmission and the steering, the all wheel steering on this car steal the show. Um, the VTEC V6 with 310 horsepower does the job very well, uh, but this is a very well refined car mechanically. Interior is a disappointment. Um, but let me know what you guys think. Uh, would you guys pick one of these over, uh, you know, some of the more expensive uh, brethren, such as the LS460 or the 500 for that matter, or the S Class or the BMW, etc.? Let me know what you guys think. Which which car in this class would you pick and why?